Dave Moss is one one half of the wedding photographer team. Abby plus Dave. He's based out of Calgary, Alberta, and has shot weddings all over the world for the past decade. Among other accomplishments, Dave was named one of the top 100 wedding photographers in North America by SLR Lounge. A helper through and through, Dave has shifted away from being a photographer to focus on business and life coaching, helping photographers develop the methodology to to hit peak performance based on who they are, what they love to shoot, and what their unique personality brings to the table. Now, uh, for this next bit, pretend that I'm reading it as Dave Moss. Our clients already know. Our clients already know that we that we do photography. So, how can we let them know? Oh, I'm going to start this over. Bear with me. Our clients already know that we do photography. So, how can we let them know that we do so much more than that? Dave's talk today will focus on a few tips on how to talk to potential clients about the value that we can bring them. It's entitled value marketing made easy take it away dave thanks bryce all right i'll just get my screen share going here hopefully that uh that pops up and you guys can see everything it's looking good awesome all right so good afternoon everybody uh hopefully your brains aren't too melted these last two days have been pretty amazing um i really want to thank the image salon for putting this on and specifically to be daniel who asked me to be a part of this All right, so a little bit about me. Uh, My name is Dave Moss. As Bryce said, I'm a wedding photographer with my wife for Abby Plus Dave, and I'm a business coach. I'm based out of Alberta, Canada, more commonly known as the place where Gabe McClintock and two men are from. Um, I've been photographing weddings for 11 years with my beautiful wife, Abigail. Um, And two years ago, I started transitioning into a business coach role. I've now helped over 50 photographers with their business systems, marketing, sales, and everything in between as a one-on-one coach. Uh, I recently started up a new program called Business as an Adventure, where I'll be doing more online and group education to help as many people as I can. Uh, my goal, my personal goal is to help at least a thousand photographers by 2022. Uh, I think there's a couple hundred people watching today and like a thousand people signed up. So hopefully that gets me a little closer to my goal. All right, enough about me. Let's talk about how I can help your business in this next 20 minutes. Uh, Thanks to COVID-19, many of our businesses have been put into a bit of a holding pattern, making our futures a little uncertain, but the world is starting to open back up bit by bit, and we're all waiting at the starting line, ready to get back to work. I not only want you to be able to get back to work, but I want you to make become an unstoppable business. I want you to be able to book so many clients and make so much money that you will not only thrive in the next few years, but be able to survive anything that is thrown your way down the road. And how do we do that? I already spoiled it a little bit with the title, but it's through value marketing. So I'm going to do my absolute best to give away as much knowledge as I possibly can in the next 20 minutes. And this is what the talk is going to be about. Uh, We'll have a brief breakdown of the differences between price and value marketing, a three-point plan on how you can do value marketing. And then I'm going to explain why you all need to stop talking about yourselves and start guiding the true heroes of your business journey who are your clients. And then I'll show you exactly how you can show amazing value to your clients. And if I don't talk too much, hopefully we've got some time for some Q&A. Okay, so let's get moving. First off, what most photographers do is what is laid out on the left here, price marketing. And you might think, no, Dave, I don't do that. But in the last five weeks, I've been doing free website reviews in my business Facebook group, and I've looked at over 300 photographers' websites. And I would say, if not all of you, at least 95% of you are on your websites doing price marketing. This is the thing that leads to burnout, folks, which is a word you've probably heard a lot in the last few days. I've heard it from a few of the talks. If you're not doing what you need for you and for your clients, but you're just selling your photography as a product, you're doing everyone a disservice. That's price marketing. You're showing the product and then letting the client make a decision if the photos alone are worth it. It's like saying you wanna be the grocery store of photography with your packages just lined up on the shelf People can come by and decide if $9.99 is the right price for family photography or if they should wait for a coupon. We don't want to be a commodity. We want to be a special service for these people. Now, value, value marketing is actually way easier than all of that, but it takes a little bit of upfront effort. You have to start thinking about things from your client's perspective and put in a little bit more work on your message and your brand's positioning and presentation. But the nice thing about value marketing is that it allows you to stand out as you even more. By solving your client's problems, we also get to show up authentically as artists and as brands and as service providers and stand out from the crowd because we're going to solve their problems in very unique ways. We don't often give credit to all the things in our business other than our photography. So we're telling our potential clients, hey, here are my photos. What do you think that they're worth? 
But there are so many other things that we do for our clients that most of us rarely ever talk about on our websites or social media or in any of our marketing copy. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt and assume that you talk about these things in your client meetings once you get them on the phone or in a coffee shop or in person in your studio. But by that point in time, you've already turned away a huge amount of potential clients because you've either confused them or you've told them that you're too expensive. And I think most of us do this because we never went to marketing school. Instead, uh, we started taking photos. Some people told us that those photos were awesome. And then we hung out our shingle and we went into business. So we perceive our photos to be the biggest and often sole value that we provide to our clients. But to our clients, the photos are only a small part of what they're buying when they're looking for a photographer. Uh, take a wedding photographer, for example. You help them plan. You help them fall deeper in love. Uh, you create heirlooms for their family and for the unborn generations to come. Some of you take them on grand adventures up mountains or to Icelandic waterfalls, to hidden beaches or into quiet forests, not to mention all the endless products and services that we add on to our packages with second photographers and photo booths and same day slideshows and all of those things. So you need to be the guide for the, your clients. They are the hero of the journey. You are the Obi-Wan Kenobi to the Luke Skywalker, the Mr. Miyagi to their karate kid. We are there to solve their problems, to help them have the wedding day of their dreams, not our dreams. But so many of us spend all of our time talking about how great we are instead of how we're here to help them. So this is how we're going to do it. We have to present everything we do really clearly and without any big words. Our brains have evolved to survive. And in the past, survival meant preserving calories just in case a saber-toothed tiger came around a bend and wanted to have us for dinner. But what that means in the modern day is that when we're on the internet, we don't read, we skim. Reading actually takes a lot of calories. So our brains look for the things that are important and then just filter out the rest. So when you're working on your website copy or your Instagram post, keep it short and make it easy and make it so clearly connected to your client's needs. Um, Donald Miller of StoryBrand uh, calls this the grunt test, which essentially means your words are so simple, a caveman could read your website and then grunt that he understands. And if you haven't read Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller, it's a good place to start for all this. I guess second place to start. This is where we're starting. All right, next, we have to solve our clients' problems. Yeah, of course they need photographs. That's why they're coming to us. But what else do they need? It's different for every business, but maybe your client needs a headshot to get them their dream job. So say that right on your website. Headshots, so good, you'll get your dream job. Or maybe they're eloping because their families are way too much stress. So empathize with that and say how you're going to give them the most stress-free elopement day ever. Or maybe you're a pet photographer and your potential client loves their pets so much that they want to barf and that they want a photo of their dog on their desk at work because they can't bear to get away from them. I want you to put that copy all over the place on your website and speak to that person. Essentially, the photos are part of the problem, but they are rarely the whole problem. There are layers and layers of decisions and stressors and problems that are leading them towards us. So you have to tell them in that sixth grade language how you are going to solve the problems. And then finally, we have to put a decision in front of them and it has to be assertive. Business is like dating. If someone was interested in you and they came up to you at a bar and were like, hey, uh, you know, maybe sometimes if you feel it, you don't have to, but you know, maybe if you want to, uh, do you wanna, can I get dinner sometime? How many of us are gonna say yes to that pickup? Not many. But that's what so many of us are doing with our websites. Not only are we making it hard for them to book us with only having one link to our contact form in the top right of our page, but we're also be being really passive by just saying contact. Forget all that. You don't want to, you want them to go to dinner with you. You want to have a big date me now button or to put it in photography terms, book now or book a call. Or if you're really clear in your value message, just put book your wedding date now on your homepage. Let them make that decision. Okay, if you take nothing else away from, from this talk, take this. Our clients don't give a damn how hard you work or how much the cost of your album is or what your competition is charging. All they care about is what they are getting and how much it's going to cost them. So stop making them guess and show them how much they are actually getting for your price. Forming a value-based connection with your target audience can help strengthen your customer, customer loyalty, create brand advocates for great testimonials and good re uh, referrals, and it can increase engagement. But the number one biggest reason to look at value-based marketing, it sells. That's all great. 
Uh, but what, if, what does any of that actually mean, you might be asking me? Well, I'm glad you asked, imaginary question asker, because <laughs> I'm about to show you. We're gonna go through a lightning round value marketing course. I'm already running out of time. I'm like halfway through and I wanna cram this stuff into your probably already full brains. Okay, first, you have to know who the hell you are marketing to. There is not a business out there besides maybe Amazon who is marketing to every single possible person. And even with Amazon, once they start to get to know you a little bit, they just start showing you the things that are interesting to you and they start hiding all the rest of that. So even they are trying to market directly to you. So rather than being the photographer for everyone, be the photographer for people who need you. A lot of people hear things like ideal client and assume it means you can only work with one type of person, and that's totally false. All it means is that you are narrowing your marketing scope to make it easier to get a sale. For instance, on our wedding photography website at Abby Plus Dave, all of our photos are either outside in the mountains or they're a candid moment. So we're telling people, hey, if you're getting married in the mountains and you want moments, hire us. But that doesn't tell everybody else to go away. We still do ballroom weddings and city weddings and golf course weddings and backyard weddings and elopement and travel weddings. But the majority of our clients are fitting the type of wedding that we love to do the most, which is here in the Alberta Rockies. So think of knowing your ideal client as a way to shoot more of what you love and less of just what pays the bills. Okay, next step, have a plan and then tell them the plan. <laughs> so many of us have these great ideas in our heads about how we're gonna make our clients' lives easier, but then we completely forget to tell them this plan. Our brains think in threes, nine, one, one, stop, drop, roll. Airport codes are three letters. So you wanna have a three-step plan that tells them that working with you is going to be the best decision that they will ever make. Uh, here's how it can look. Say you're a wedding photographer, because I'm a wedding photographer, so it's where I, the way I think most of the time. Step one. You contact me and we meet up. You tell me all about your dream wedding and then we create the ultimate photography package and plan for you. Step two, you go and have the best wedding ever and you don't have to stress because you remember that plan we made? Well, I remember it. So I'm gonna put that into action and you just get to party all day. Step three, I edit and deliver your photos, your prints, your album, and you just get to relive that magical day for the rest of your lives and your kids' lives and your grandkids' lives forever and ever. That's a great three-step plan. Your client reads that, they know exactly what's gonna happen. Three-step plans are everywhere. Look at Mr. Miyagi's three-step plan from Karate Kid. Step one, paint the fence, wax the cars, sand the floor. Step two, Get some confidence in that kid. Step three, crane kick that Cobra Kai kid in his smug little face, win the tournament, get the girl. It's perfect, three-step plan. That's all we need. Okay, next, be empathetic. If Obi-Wan or Mr. Miyagi didn't show some empathy towards the plight of their charges, then the Death Star would still be flying around out there blowing up planets, and Cobra Kai would have kicked Daniel's ass day after day until he had to change schools. You need to actually tell them that you understand that booking a photographer can be a tough and confusing process. They're gonna look at site after site and Instagram after Instagram, and eventually it's gonna all start to blend together. But if you speak to them and the, their problems and say, look, man, I get it, it's totally tough. They're gonna, they're gonna feel that. And then you have to step up and be the expert and let them know why you're the best choice for them. They don't know how many weddings that you've shot or headshots or families. They don't know how many years you've been doing this or how many clients you've blown away with all of your awesome work. Don't make them guess and burn those brain calories. Tell them why you're the expert and why if they choose you, they are going to have the best photo shoot of their lives. And when you tell them how you're gonna solve their problems, don't just talk about now, talk about the future. Uh, there's a photographer out of the Pacific Northwest, uh, Benj Haish, has one of my favorite wedding photography quotes of all time. And he says, one day I hope one of my wedding photographs saves a marriage. Now, I'm not saying you need to put my photos are your marriage counselor on your website, might not work out great, but you can talk about how through these photos, they get to remember their wedding day and rekindle their love over and over again. Because I don't know about you guys, but when I have a particularly crappy day, I'm really grateful to have photos of, of Abby's and my wedding day and a lot of our favorite days on the walls around our house. All right, and then finally, I covered this above, but this is really, really important. You have to keep it simple. 
Let them burn calories at the gym, not reading your website or your PDFs or your Instagram. You want to just be straight up with them and just say, hey, this is what you need. Okay, I just want to hammer this point home one more time. We can't assume our clients know what we know or understand what it is that we do and how it's going to make their lives better. You have to tell them, you have to show them, like Blair was just talking about with photos or like Gabe mentioned earlier, show them what you do and then make it really, really simple throughout the entire process for them to understand how you are going to be there to guide them to the best family session or the best headshot shot session or the best wedding. Okay, because I've had way too much coffee in the last few days watching these, I threw in a few extra more tips just for you guys. Okay, so number one, give away something anything. Not a free shoot, not a free print, but create an amazing guide that goes on your website that solves one of their problems. Be an expert and say, I know you're struggling with this. Let me help. And you don't even have to pay for, pay me for it. But the best part of that is if you actually do help them, they will totally pay you for it. I'm just talking simple guides to help them solve a small wedding problem. Like, five ways to choose the right photographer for you or 10 ways to look your best on your engagement shoot or um, uh, seven mistakes people make hiring a documentary family photographer. Or you can dream bigger than that. Uh, I'm working on a full mountain guide right now for our clients. Uh, one of their biggest pain points that we've heard from our clients in the last few years is that they're not from here. They fly in from all over the world to get married here. And all of their friends and family ask them, hey, where do I go eat? Or what's a good hike? Or how do I get a cup of coffee? Well, I've lived here for almost 40 years, so I know all the good spots. I'm putting together this huge 40-page guide to the Alberta Rockies so that they can give it out to their guests with all of our favorite restaurants, and cafes, hikes, and secret hidden spots that they won't find on TripAdvisor. And everybody who wants it gets it for free. Uh, I had developed a trial version of this last year that I just had done through email, and I gave it to a couple who were coming here from Arizona. And the bride told me afterwards that she would have paid an extra $1,000 on our photography package just to have that guide because it solved a huge problem for her. Okay, small soapbox moment here, but guys, you got to stop using your blog posts for only posting uh, past shoots. Like nobody is going to Google Billy and Virginia's lake wedding. Nobody is going to Google that. You know what they're going to Google? They're going to Google, what are the best wedding venues in my city? Uh, what do I do if it rains on my wedding day? How do I look good in photos? What should I wear to my photo session? How do I make my kids behave in our photos? Those are the things that you should be putting on your blog because when your website shows up answering one of those questions and you have a site full of amazing wedding photos, who do you think they're gonna hire? It's gonna be you. It's not gonna be Billy and Virginia's photographer who just put a past shoot on there that no one is going to search for. Okay, two steps last, next, left. Last one, easy one. But if you're not sure what your client's problems are, just listen to them. They'll tell you. And if you don't wanna wait for new clients to come in to figure out what their problems are, reach out to your past clients and ask them, People love talking about themselves. So don't think that they won't respond to you because your past clients will. They will respond to you and say, hey, this was a problem I had or this was a stressor I had or this was something I was worried about. And then you just create that content for your future couples or future families or future clients. And then finally, make everything you do beautiful. Hire a graphic designer if you want, um, or if you don't have the budget, use something like canva.com or learn how to use InDesign and make sure everything your client sees is as beautiful as it can be. Good quality PDFs, emails, logos, contracts, websites. These all go really far to position you as an expert. I'm sure everybody here has tried to hire a plumber or something and it looks like their website is straight out of the 90s and it makes you pause and go, oof. I'm not really sure if this is the right person for me because you can't trust them as the expert. All right, I think I have like 30 seconds left, so that's my time. Uh, I just wanted to let you guys know I'm an open book. I'll be in the, the chat afterwards to answer questions. Um, you can drop me an email or a DM, friend me on Facebook, hit me up on my website contact form, whatever you like. If you want these slides, go to that link at the bottom and you can grab the slides from today's talk. Um, and then my only plug, I have an in-person workshop coming up in November. It's four days in the Alberta Rockies, and we are going to reboot your business from the ground up. And that's it. That's my only plug. I think I'm, I think I'm done. No, yeah, you oh, did yeah, great. You did great. Um, awesome.
now it's right. question time. time. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna stop that. There. Uh, ooh. Uh, ooh. One, of one of the questions was, was um, um, if you have any, like, have any like, examples, examples that you can go into detail, detail about, about uh, but I don't know but if I we have time, time for that. that. Um, um, so I'm, I would recommend for that, that person to check, check out your Facebook, 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 Facebook group that you have, yeah, and we'll yeah, post the link, because like, I know that you go really deep with the stuff there. Next question is, as a photographer, and when you're and like kind of getting started, started like how do you discover what your value is yeah it's gonna change and and you can take some time and figure that out but i think just right out of the gate if you're trying to figure out what your value is from the beginning just just listen to your clients or or think of like what problems you might have if you were to hire that type of photographer just ask yourself you know if i was hiring a family photographer what would i be worried about and then just start from there and then as you start to get more and more clients, just ask them, be like, hey, what problems can I solve for you? And would you have any other book recommendations on the subject? Um, oh, man. There is a, a book that I absolutely love that I rem can't remember. I'm just going to Google the title right now. Uh, it was a super good one. It was called... Oh, man. Now my Google foo is going to uh, the introvert's edge by Matthew Pollard. It's a sales book for people who aren't super salesy. And it taught me a lot about bringing story into the way that we sell to people. Nice. Um, someone's asking if they can get your guide or will that where that will be made available. Uh, eventually, I'm I'm building it right now. It'll just be a website or a web a page on my website. So when it's up, I'll probably post it in my my businesses and adventure Facebook group. Nice. Well, yeah. Dave, it's always a pleasure. I uh, miss you. It was really nice to get to see you and have a lot of like in depth conversations right before uh, the COVID stuff made that <laughs> yeah, possible. <man. laughs> Vegas feels like 10 years ago. <laughs> right? I was such a different person. I was so young and naive. Um, but yeah, thank you for being a part of this. Um, yeah, that was really good. You you rocked it. Awesome. Thanks, man. Cool. Good enjoy, to see you. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of the day. You too. All right. So we're going to have a short break and then we'll be back with our next speaker, Kasha Lambert.